Mimi Scheller examines how people move, how mobile communication changes how people move, and how new systems of mobility can actually create immobility. As the founding director of the M Center, she works to better understand these mobilities, the large-scale movements of people, objects, capital, and information across the world, and mobile communications. Yes, I agree. We've always been mobile, so there's a long history of mobility and it's changing now. So when people say we're more mobile now, I like to think that it's a combination of different kinds of mobility, but also immobility. So moving always involves um, rhythms or temporalities of pausing and moving. And I'm as interested in the stops and the moments in between movement, which are often when we um, access our mobile devices and we switch between the screen and the outer world all the time. I think in um, cities there will be something like the digital divide will increasingly become a mobile divide where those who have smartphones with certain apps will be able to participate in all sorts of things in new ways, especially um, augmented reality will bring a kind of screen of information directly accessible as you're sort of walking around and looking at things. Um, but the people who don't have a smartphone and don't have those apps, they'll, they'll be losing that whole layer of information. So they won't be part of the public sphere in the same way. Mobile digital life is urbanized, but the urban is no longer located just in the city. So what mobiles do is they spread the urban out. So it's a kind of connectivity and can be accessed in all different places. So you could be in a very remote part of the world and still access your urban connections and information and experiences from there. Being urbanized means that we have uh, mobile access wherever we are. So the urban is everywhere and everywhere the mobile goes, we take the urban with us. I don't think I would speak of a mobile revolution, but of a mobile transition. The idea of um, a mobile transition um, suggests that we live in a new kind of hybrid space, which combines digital and physical realities together at the same time. So when we move through hybrid space, we're experiencing the location around us, but we're also able to experience a lot of information that's coming from afar and social networks that are distant. Mobile art, people used to think of that just as sort of digital art that would be on a screen and you would sort of be able to pull it out of your pocket and look at something. But actually mobile art in, is drawing on a much wider um, history of performance and immersive theater and gameplay and um, bodily experience of place. So mobile art actually intensifies our um, experience of location and kind of gives us a new way to perceive and understand where we are through mobile technology or in, in interacting with it. So I think there are two visions of the future of the mobile city. One is a very negative vision of a lot of surveillance, um, maybe automated highways and self-driving vehicles and uh, tracking of people. And it's um, kind of a scary governmental control of public space. But there's a much more positive vision, which is about a kind of democratization of um, interaction through mobile networks and that people could actually have more of a say and more participation in their own cities. Both the negative and positive developments of the mobile city are going to be happening at the same time. It's not one or the other, but that we can be politically aware of which ones we are supportive of and which ones we need to be careful of. I would say that for the last 200 years or so, there has been an increase in speed in all forms of transportation and communication. Speed has been driving uh, the technology. But I think that trend is um, starting to come to an end and that we're more and more aware of the limits of our planetary resources and of the amount of energy that we use. And rather than just promoting speed, we're also looking more into efficiency, energy efficiency, um, 
lightness and using resources more carefully. Um, so you could say that there's now a, a idea of limiting speed and of actually trying to substitute for high-speed movement instead, say, working from home or co-working spaces in a, um, a locality in a neighborhood rather than the long commute to a workplace. Um, and also using, being more careful about what kinds of transportation we use, making sure they're energy efficient, which sometimes means go slower. Um, and as I think people value slowness and also stillness, just staying still, we can start to sort of break the, um, the assumption that mobility always equals freedom and that speed is always an increase of more freedom because it's not. When a technology is new, that the um, initial, there's an initial sort of wow factor. You're like, oh, I can do this and that and I can get this and get that. And it's a, there's a kind of excitement there. But for those who have grown up with it and sort of um, assume that's just how things are, they're not necessarily as taken by just the sheer excitement of the possibility. And they begin to sort of look at it maybe, oh, well, I could use this or that, but maybe I don't want to. Um, so they, there's a desire to have the uh, um, chance for access and connection via a mobile, but there's also the choice to not use that. So sometimes not using something can be a way of um, actually empowering yourself. And there's many young people who have chosen um, consciously to slow down and to sort of move away from that. Um, so for example, people um, are riding bikes more or walking to work. And some people are choosing to have sort of digital holidays, digital free holidays where they um, have no connections or, you know, put the cell phone away, put the mobile away for um, a weekend or something like that. I'd like to quote uh, what some friends of mine have said about net locality, that the pervasiveness of location-aware technology has made it possible to consistently and persistently locate ourselves and be networked within patterns of mobility. We are creating new ways of interacting with people, places, services, and screens while moving or while pausing in movement. <laughs>